I did turn up to the press because I don't like how you, I didn't like how you look now. You took your punch at one point at one point at the time. Okay. I told them again, they, this should be 47. I don't like how you look at punch at 40. So you shouldn't get there. They turned down to the eight. We'll have to. He got him back, right? Michael Williams Jr. and Michael Williams Sr. both exposed by Roy Jones Jr. In the interview that Roy Jones did, and shout out to World Combat Sports for a great interview, he let us know that Michael Williams Jr. ain't got it. He had to do everything he could to protect Michael Williams Jr. And it still wasn't enough because he just simply don't got it. He can't cut it as a fighter. He couldn't even hang with the three and no fighters in my gym. Before we get into this video, make sure that you hit my like button and subscribe to the channel if you not already sub to the channel. Y'all don't wanna miss this one. Now it's been a lot of talks going around that Roy Jones Jr. purposely sabotage the fight between Michael Williams Jr. and Adrian Broner. And you know, Michael Williams Sr., he came out and he spoke on it and shout out to Mark Nash. And you know, he talked about how Roy Jones has a huge ego, how Roy Jones had his son sparring like eight or nine days out from the fight. And you know, how Roy Jones purposely had someone go in there and break Mike Williams' jaw. Now, initially, when I heard this story, I was told that Michael Williams Jr. was in there sparring with basically a cruiserweight. But that wasn't the truth, so I got to clear that up. You know, Michael Williams, he was sparring with a 135-pounder. He was sparring with 135-pounders. And listening to Michael Williams Sr., Roy Jones had called him and he said, you know, we need to pull this kid out of this fight. He not ready for somebody on Adrian Burner caliber. They wanted the bag. You know what I'm talking about? That's what it's about. It's about a bag and I can understand who don't want a bag. You dig what I'm saying? But Roy Jones wanted to pull him out because he said, man, he just not ready. He's not looking on that level. He not looking on the level that he need to be looking to get in the ring with a world, a former world champion like Adrian Broner. He's getting hit with all type of unnecessary shots and sparring, and he's just not looking good. So Michael Williams Sr. says he asked Roy Jones, well, what is his offense looking like? And he says that Roy Jones says, well, his offense is looking pretty sharp. But the thing is, you got to understand, you're not in there, right, sparring when you get in the ring with Adrian Bronner. It, because when Adrian Bronner hit him with one of them licks, it's going to do a lot more than break his jaw. If he couldn't take a punch from a 130-pounder, that's only 3-0, that's nowhere near Adrian Bronner's level. But ultimately, after Roy Jones talked to Michael Williams Jr. first and tried to get him to pull out of the fight, then he called his dad and told his dad, you know, he not ready. He don't need to go into this fight with Adrian Brunner. They both end up refusing. They said, no, we fighting. But I can understand why Michael Williams Sr. is pissed off because he wanted a bag. But I also, even more so, understand where Roy Jones is coming from. You know what I'm talking about? Roy Jones is protecting this young man's health. He protecting his life. You don't play boxing. But a lot of people would say, well, why did Roy Jones have him in there sparring eight or nine days out from the fight? Well, Roy Jones addressed that. He said, look, man, he had been looking so bad in sparring. And when I tried to get him to pull out of the fight, they both refused. So, you know, I said, hey, well, I'm going to go in there. You're going to spar today and we're going to see if you look any better. And if you can't show me nothing, then, you know, I suggest again that you need to pull out of the fight. He went in there. He went sparred and he didn't show him anything. He was sparring the same guys at 130 pounds that he had been sparring and he ended up getting his jaw broke. But anyway, Michael Williams Sr., he said that his kid called him and he like, man, Roy Jones is acting funny. He's been acting funny, you know, during camp now. His energy ain't the same towards me. And, you know, they ultimately, with everybody else on the Internet, said that Roy Jones wasn't a good trainer. Roy Jones sabotaged the fight. Roy Jones is the reason that Michael Williams Jr. got his jaw broke. Roy Jones this and Roy Jones that. They point all the fingers at Roy Jones, putting all the blame on Roy Jones. But now, we finally get to hear Roy Jones' side of the story. And Roy Jones exposed a lot of the things that I saw, right? I already knew myself from seeing Michael Williams Jr. in the ring. 
but he even exposed more. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play a little bit of the audio of what Roy Jones had to say. Then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna let you know everything else that Roy Jones had to say, and we're gonna talk about it a little bit. I did turn up to the French because I don't like how I didn't like how you look at how you take the punch at one point at one point at the time. Okay. And then they can't say you should be four seven. I don't like how you look at the punch at four. So you shouldn't get there. They turn down to the eight. We'll have to. He got him there. What? This time I'm in the gym. I want to take the punch at four to seven. I don't like how you take the punch at four to seven. Same thing ain't like what I saw back then. So I said, no, he don't need to fight. He ain't looking good taking the punch at four to seven either now. He didn't look good taking my one quarter, which is why I had told him not to take that fight. This time, you don't look good taking my part of the devil. So, what I say again, don't take this fight. Well, because I'm concerned about the boy's well being. I was a damn with the earthly. So there you go. Y'all heard some of what Roy Jones had to say about the whole situation. But when you heard in the beginning, Roy Jones was talking about Michael Williams Jr., the fight that he lost. I think he's had one fight since then. But the fight before that where he lost and he lost badly, he got knocked out, right? And Roy Jones said, look, man, I was telling him then don't take that fight with John Bowser. I didn't like how he looked throughout training camp. You know, he wasn't looking good at 140. You, I told him not to take the fight. And he went on anyway. They fought at 138 pounds. And you see what happened. He got embarrassed. But I was the one that tried to get him from taking the fight. But he went out there. And he got embarrassed on ESPN in front of the world. And I saw that. And when I saw that fight, I said, yeah, this kid ain't got it. But they made all type of excuses, said, oh, man, they was weight drained. They shouldn't have been fighting at that weight. They, you know, need to fight at 147 pounds and all of that. And a lot of fighters do that. And, you know, I like Michael Williams Jr. and Sr., but that's just how I feel about the situation. I got to keep it 100. I ain't going to sugarcoat it because I don't sugarcoat none with nobody else. So Roy Jones is saying he saw the same thing in this camp. The second camp in a row that he's been with Michael Williams Jr., he saw the same thing. You know, and he says this time he moving up to 147. And I don't like how he taking punches in sparring against guys that's 130 pounders. Guys that's only 3-0. and oh. Now you going in there to fight Adrian Broner that got more world champions than both of these guys that you sparring. And you can't even take that punch. What you think is going to happen when Adrian Broner touches you? So he's saying he's trying to explain that to his pops. He's trying to explain that to Michael Williams Jr. And they're not listening. So he says, yeah, when they say my energy was different, yeah, my energy was different. Because I know that he's going in there, right? He ain't hitting no punching bag. He's going in there against somebody that's on a whole different level than anybody else that he's been in the ring with. And the stuff that he's been doing with these other guys fighting at these local bars and stuff, you know what I'm saying? It ain't going to work with Adrian Brunner. He's saying, you know, it's not going to work. I know that in my head that the little offense that he got, that he think he can get off because he got off against these cab drivers, it's just not going to work. So he said, I'm trying to explain that to him. That's why the energy is different because I'm kind of terrified for the kid to get in there with Adrian Brunner. That's why I was trying to get him to pull out. It ain't nothing to do with no sabotage. He said, if I want to sabotage him, it's a lot of fighters that I had that was begging to get in the ring with him and spar. And I know they was going to hurt him. He says, I know they was going to get in there and do more than break his jaw. If I wanted to sabotage the fight, I would have let one of them get in there with Michael Williams Jr. And the fight would have been canceled. He says, so why would I want to cancel the fight just for no reason? I wanted to cancel the fight because I'm trying to protect him. And the reason I had him go and spar again eight, nine days out from the fight is because I wanted to see if he was going to show me something different than what he had been showing me. Had nothing to do with my ego. But when you talk to Michael Williams Jr. and Michael Williams Sr., they tell you that it was Roy Jones' ego. The reason he had Michael Williams Jr. in there sparring eight, nine days out from the fight is because of his ego. Because they didn't accept what he said when he asked them to pull out of the fight. It was all because of his ego and he wanted to show Michael Williams Jr., okay, you don't want to listen to me, I got something for you. 
But come on, man, that don't even make sense because you 147 pounds. That's what weight class you fighting at. He got you sparring two different 130 pounders. He said they only went all out for four rounds. You know what I'm talking about? So if you can't cut it with 130 pounders, that's only three and no, and they ain't even on that level. What make you think that you can cut it with Adrian Brunner? And we all know that Adrian Brunner is not like he used to be, but he still can punch. So if he hits you with one of the shots, he going to catch you with, and he is going to catch you somewhere in that fight. How are you going to react? What's going to happen to you? You know what I'm talking about? Look what happened to you when you fought John Boza. You got embarrassed. You know what I'm saying? He beat you all over the ring. He damn near killed you in the ring. I understand where Roy Jones is coming from. And Roy Jones is from the old school. Yeah, Roy Jones, to me, is not the best trainer. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot more trainers out there that's much better than Roy Jones. That's in my opinion. You know, Roy Jones would probably be a great trainer if he got somebody that had power like he did and had the reflexes like he did and just all around God gifted because he looked like he tried to train fighters and fight the way that he did, but everybody can't do that because they don't have the gifted talent that he had. But I understand where he's coming from, and he's from the old school. You know, back then it was like, all right, bet. You know what I'm saying? You're going to have to show me something. If you can't show me in sparring that you can cut it, you don't need to be in the ring because you're going to get embarrassed like you did last time. Now, Michael Williams Sr., he's saying that, you know, hey, my son shouldn't have been even sparring. They should have just been, you know, just moving around the ring, just working on getting sharp and things like that. So it's... Roy Jones' story, a man that's been in the ring at the highest level, a man, in my opinion, that's pound for pound, prime for prime, the best that's ever stepped in the ring, and then you got Michael Williams Sr. that, if he did box, I don't know if he ever boxed, but if he did, he ain't never been on that level. You know what I'm talking about? He don't know what it takes to be in the ring on that level like that. So, yeah, Roy Jones know what he's doing when it comes to that. And imagine... If you crying about that he got his jaw broken sparring, and it's all because of a bag, I understand they pissed off because he feel like, hey, if something would have happened to him in the ring with Adrian Broner, at least we would have got a bag for it. But what if you wouldn't have came out of the fight? You know what I'm talking about? You can't play boxing. You got eight ounce gloves on. You're talking about some something that happened with 16 ounce gloves on and headgear. What if Adrian Broner would have caught you with one of them same blows with them eight ounce gloves on? And maybe you would have been leaving out of the fight in the stretcher. Then you wouldn't have had that same energy towards, you know, Roy Jones. Then you might would have wished that he would have pulled your son out of the fight. Because you can't take that money to the grave with you. You feel me? So everybody is blaming Roy Jones for this. Whatever was going to happen, it was going to happen anyway. Either in sparring or inside that ring with Adrian Broner. Ain't nobody got to sabotage nothing. You know what I'm talking about? Adrian Broner and Michael Williams Jr. is not that important for somebody to be trying to sabotage. Real talk. You know what I'm saying? With all you conspiracy theorists out there. That's making up all type of stories. Try to act like that. People trying to stop Adrian Broner and Michael Williams Jr. fight. You know what I'm talking about? That's just how I feel about it. But yeah, that's basically what Roy Jones had to say. That's basically what Michael Williams Jr. had to say. And I want to know what y'all got to say. I want to know what the people got to say. How y'all feel about this situation? Drop a comment in the comment section. Let me know. And yeah, don't forget to hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already a sub to the channel. And y'all already know how I do. Dang, go talking that boxing again. And I'm gone.